Hello and welcome to the Automotive Anecdotes podcast from Automotive Tales, your regular chat about all things on four wheels that your other friends just don't want to talk about. Joined by your regular hosts, John at John MSM on all social media platforms, and I'm Martin at Bob Clayton on still just Instagram. I have not managed to work out what Tumblr is. So we are joined by our regular Series One guests as well. We have Greg, the Yorkshire engineer, on Twitter only because I haven't got Instagram yet. Uh, Chris Norton, so underscore Chris Norton on Instagram. I, uh, I love how we've, we're so not down with the times. Yeah. Um, we've got, I've got Twitter, but I don't know what Instagram is. I've got I Instagram, but uh, what's this clattering thing? Uh, Join me on Bebo. <laughs> <laughs> we we have to bring back Bebo. That dates people. Make it cool again. Anyway, before, before we start, a quick explanation of what it is we're doing here today. We're going to ask our guests a simple question at the beginning. It could be first, worst, best, current, cheapest, dumbest, most expensive. could be anything to do with a car that they've owned or bought or sold or borrowed or loaned or anything like that. We'll then talk about uh, a subject for the day and then finish, of course, with the all-important game that is taking over the nation and we are just waiting for the TV licensing deal of Barge Bingo to go through and you can catch that on Channel 4. No, you can't. I'm sorry. It's a lie. Without further ado, a question that I want to pose to you all to start the podcast then. So we've had your first car. We've had your worst car. Uh, let's flip that question around then. What's the car that you most regret selling? Uh, anybody want to kick us off on that one? Yeah, I'll kick in on this one. Uh, probably the car that I regret selling the most is my Octavia VRS Estate. Uh, I traded it for my worst car, uh, or oh, one of my worst cars it. for the Kia. Uh, and yeah, just fundamentally regret selling it. Uh, it was big, it was practical, it, it was quick. Uh, and yeah, I traded it in for something that was just ten times worse. You know, being a tight Yorkshireman and all that, my uh, my Yorkshire heart ruled my head. I didn't realise you traded in the Skoda. For well, the I sold. Seed. I sold it to somebody else in the military who's actually still got it. Uh, and he's right. still running it. It's still on the road as the Octavia. Uh, it's done a fair few more miles. He's had he's had a few issues with it. Interestingly, suppose that was a lucky escape or not? As he got a little bit older? Question mark. I don't know, he's just a crap driver. Uh, <laughs> but it's, uh, yeah, I just regret it. it. It was just a really good car at the time. So you'd have another one? I'd have another one, maybe. Possibly. Yeah. Possibly. <laughs> Official endorsement. Scale I think uh, what's the sponsor is. <laughs> Pretty so. good, then. <laughs> yeah, the problem is that I've found other brands now, and as, as I discussed, I'm on the Mazda 6 at the moment, and I, I find of the Mazda, the, you know, the engine's better, I think, uh, than the VAG diesel. Uh, it, it's just got a far better spread of torque. It's got more torque on it, and also, and it's a pet peeve of mine is with VAG cars with that, BMW. That was episode one. I know it was episode one. <laughs> I'm going to rant about it now because I can. Uh, the Mazda I bought a sport looks model because I wanted to buy a, a top spec or uh, one of the top spec models, and it came with all the kit on a standard. If I bought that same car in the Octavia, I'd need to specify specify the parking sensor, I'd have to spec mm. the LED headlights, I'd have to spec the heated seats, I'd have to spec the camera, which turns a 25 grand base car into a 35, 36 grand car. Yeah. Mazda I walked here, went, there's the trim levels, they've all got a set standard, if you want something else, then you're going to have to go up a trim. Right, make your decision. Easy. I'm, I'm really surprised, actually, it's taken us three episodes to get on to the ridiculousness of trim levels in cars. So oh, that's, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm fully supportive of that stance. It's uh, but Master Master always have been quite uh, straightforward with yeah. you know you, you pick a spec and I know you can add things on any car, can't you? But they're, they're reasonably straightforward. Not okay. like BMW where wheels are an option. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, that, and that's the thing. You see people who buy an M Sport BMW, but it's got NAF or kit on it. You yeah. know, it hasn't got basics like parking. You know, if you buy a big estate or a big car, a big saloon, a big well, any reasonable size car, big SUV. 
You want parking sensors as standard, not yeah. 500 quid for an optional extra for a 40 grand car, 30 grand car you've just bought. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But going back to, yeah, the Octavia was the one car I probably regretted selling. Okay. No, that's I th- it's, it's a strong start. I'll give you that. Yeah, I'd regret um, selling. Yeah. yeah. Chris, have you, to say. have you have you sold any cars? <laughs> no, I was actually just thinking about this when you were just, when you were chatting about it. Um, I've only ever actually sold one car. I think. Um, I uh, hope you regretted it. <laughs> uh, kind of, but uh, I'm I'm going to pick one that I. But well, technically, I did sell it, but I sold it to uh, a breaker's yard. So, it was a bit, <laughs> so you scrapped crap. it. Yeah, but you said sold it to yourself. It, it was then. a sale. <laughs> it was a sale. So um, that's that's what I'm going to talk about, and and, and I do kind of regret it. So um, it was actually a 1989 Ford Escort Mark IV in absolute poverty bonus trim, um, uh, and uh, it's a shame, really. Actually, so I I had to get rid of it because um, I don't think my parents were particularly tolerant of me having two project cars at the age of 18 when I couldn't even drive uh, and, and neither could they, <laughs> um, the, the car size, uh, not the parents. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, so basically I had to sacrifice it so that I had room to work on uh, my SJ, which I subsequently didn't do. Um, so yeah, I had to get rid of this Escort Mark IV um, and I had actually been given it by um, a, one of my neighbours who, who just randomly asked me one day, do you want this car? It was my son's, but he doesn't need it anymore. And it was just sitting around on the drive. And I think that's one of the things of being a car guy as well, is people, you get a bit of a reputation and people go, oh, I've got this old shitter. Do you want it? <laughs> and the problem is being a car person, you're like, I can have some fun with that. Yeah, go on then. Yeah. Uh, why, why, why have I done that? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, but I do actually kind of regret selling this one because it... Um, on the face of it, actually, wasn't a bad car. Um, it wasn't massively rotten like a lot of them were. Um, it uh, ha- had had a, a bit of a shunt at the front that I managed to fix with um, kind of realigning the bumpers and all that kind of stuff. And it, it was it was only a minor knock. And um, yeah, and, and in the interior was mint. It was really nice. And uh, unfortunately, I had to scrap it because I had no MOT or anything like that. And uh, yeah, I just needed rid of it quickly. Yeah. Oh, but it's, a, it's an itch that I would maybe like to scratch again at some point. You get cream for that. <laughs> <laughs> so we've had, we've had Skoda, we've had Ford. Uh, John, go on. Oh, I mean, I've, I've had an awful lot of cars and I've, I mean, I've scrapped quite a large quantity of them, but I have <laughs> sold a few that I regret. And I, I really struggle with this. I kind of got four in mind wow. okay. um, that I regret for very different reasons. The first one is probably the E28 520i that we talked about in an earlier episode, which I got uh, this disaster in ex- part exchange for. So that's part of the reason I'm, I regret selling You're it. bitter about it. <laughs> yeah, well, i done a lot of work to restore it. I put new sills on it, had all the brakes done, and polished it to the inch of life. And I sold it to this guy, and he then screwed like a little DVD screen to the dashboard and then a really lovely dash top. And I was like, what? Yeah. Um, but consequently, he came back to me about six months later and said, would you would you be interested in buying a Mercedes? And I said, no, I've got about 100 quid to my name at the moment. And he said, that'll do, shake my hand. And I bought Mercedes 190 yeah. for 100 quid, <laughs> um, which was a heap. Though. The electric windows were, well, the motors were missing. I think somebody would used it as a parts car, but it's still running. Uh, but it was in incredibly good condition considering the seats were tatty, but the bodywork was good. Mm. And I slowly repaired that up, and then eventually I had to sell that when I got a new car. So that I regret selling that just because it was it owed me basically nothing, and it actually looked quite nice. It was in uh, it was in like champagne beige or gold, whatever you used to call it. A nice little Zender spoiler on the boot, um, and uh, yeah, it was a hundred pound slushmatic Mercedes. It was great, and I was a student at the time, so I used to waft around in this Mercedes. And um, on the private road, this was definitely on the university campus, <clears throat> uh, I realised the Mercedes was so lazy because it only had one stalk, so it's the right hand side, but that did your headlights because you twist the stalk yeah. and it did your wipers. Mm. Um, it didn't have a left hand stalk. So once you got in the car and you put it in drive, you didn't need your left hand. It was superfluous to requirements completely. So I used to sort of maximise the time of sleep before lectures 
by driving across campus with my bowl of cereal in my left hand, <laughs> and I could eat while I was driving along because you could the steering wheel on those old Merc 190s is massive, so it was very easy to steer with your knee. So I could quite happily roll along, especially in the straight line, <laughs> eating my breakfast to while maximising sleep time and still making lectures. Incredible. So I do regret selling that. And the other two uh, I'll, I'll mention as honorary note, I had a Golf uh, Mark IV V5 that was a really expensive car to run. They seemed to consume uh, coil packs at a sort of normal service rate. Every time you change the oil and spark plugs, you had to change the coil packs as well. Um, and that was a lovely car, but that, that had to go. I'd mothballed it for a few years, and then was like, I've just got to, got to yeah. sell it and make space. And the other one was, I'm glad we got rid of it, but I do kind of miss it, was... Uh, was a car that was named Roland. <laughs> so we turned a BMW E34, some knobs around the room, yeah. uh, BMW E34 Touring uh, 525 TDS into a rat rob, uh, for one of mine. It is the only description it had. We took all the paint off, it was all rusty, it had loads of other things, weld diff, you name it, for a lad's trip to Le Mans. And uh, I do miss that car, it's still around. Um, that was just wild. Is it still around in the same form? More or less, yeah. We took wow. the flashing lights off it and the sort of Blues Brothers style megaphone on the roof because um, mm. we borrowed those. Who did you borrow them from? I borrowed them from uh, from Commercial Bentler Products. Oh, right. We so loaned those for the... Uh, oh, the, the company in Tamworth? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, oh. They, 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 <laughs> they specialise in sort of, you know, amber lights for recovery and oh, also right. they can they do a lot of work with, uh, with film cars, police cars, so you need, you need blue flashing lights for your... Replica police car for your filming. He's a easy man. It's probably a replica police car available as well. Yes, uh... indeed. It's, especially if it's an American Yank tank. Um, <laughs> no, that's brilliant. Well, it's. Um... Look at this. We are. We are. If you can hear some clinking, my delightful, <laughs> long-suffering wife has just delivered us pizza, which is amazing, because these half-hour podcasts have not. not been, They've not been half-hour. Not been half-hour. Half-hour They've not been half-hour. So yes, yeah, that's sure. it. I think the one I probably regret some of the most is the one ninety because I actually. I genuinely love that car. It was just so lazy. Yeah. Okay. No, that's good. Well, I mean, I, I haven't really got much to add to this one because I've only ever sold two cars and I don't regret selling either of them. Are you like me? You've scrapped most I've of them? I've scrapped or written off other ones. So oh, okay. I, I, I sold uh, I, I sold a, the Stilo that I mentioned in episode one as my first car. Don't regret that. I don't need it back. Um, <laughs> and I sold or traded in, I suppose, a um, Saab 9.3 that had 188,000 miles on the clock. Um, and I don't regret trading that in because it was knackered, um, you know, as a 188,000 mile diesel Saab will be. Um, what so you live your life without regrets? Really? I live my life with no regrets. <laughs> the only thing I do regret selling is a van. Uh, I think if I had more budget at the time, I probably would have kept an Iveco daily long wheelbase that I had. Um, which uh, ended up going to a, a, a scrap a scrap man. I sold I was it to scrap. Say, did you sell it technically? I you sold it, it to WeBuyAny ScrapManVan.com or whatever it was. Um, they they had to come twice. The first lorry they brought, they didn't believe me when I said it was long wheelbase. They said, no, it's three and a half ton. It will go on this. It didn't go on this. <laughs> and then they said, well, we'll have to come on a separate day because the transporter lorry won't get down there into the village where it was parked. So uh, I had to leave it with the keys in the ignition and disconnected the battery and said just come and take it whenever you want it um i think i actually took the battery off to use at the workshop you probably did it was heavy it was a, it was the only thing that we would changed in it. it was about it was a heavy battery there's a reason i have a walking stick these days there you go uh, so no real regrets uh from, from that perspective um more bikes and vans for me more than anything so uh so the car you regretted has been sc- scrapped yeah the escort's been scrapped your car is still living and your car has long probably gone. been scrapped. I have got the number plates, so we can check. So that is another point. So, so Greg is now two one not not up uh, in terms of on this uh, initial question. Thing about today's subject, then uh, it's a, it's a bit of a broad one, but I think it depends how you interpret the question. If we say, "What is your favourite car?" Is, yeah, is that is, keep it broad yeah, like so that? I think so, and it could be many things. It could be the favourite car you own if you have a couple. Um, it could be the the car you have the biggest emotional attachment to, um, or even just the car you want the most. Like, no really object. You, somebody says you can have one car, but anything. What is it? What is your favourite car? Okay, it's nice and broad. So, should we should we hand it over to a guest first? Yes, absolutely. Um, Chris, what do you reckon? <laughs> so, my car and the way I've defined this is, <clears throat> what car do I want the most right okay. now? So. Um, 
I guess it's not so much money, no object, but it's something that I feel is attainable uh, rather than like some supercar or, or whatever. And, and what I really want is a uh, 1932 Ford Model B um, hot rod. So wow. um, at the moment, that's something I'm researching, making a kind of kit car replica type thing of. But um, I'd quite happily accept an original. Yeah, um, well, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that, so that's uh, that's probably my favourite car. I think one of the nicest proportioned cars, kind of of that. Something that like era. That. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I want a, a coupe rather than a pickup. But um, for those that are listening, I'm just showing them a picture, so you know that, that's really helpful for you guys. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it may appear before you on YouTube yeah. or, yes, or other you. platforms. So you should listen to this as a podcast, and then go onto YouTube and listen to it all again just to see the pictures. But but how how many of them still exist? Is it some? Well, you know what what's their prices been like? So in America, uh, I think there's still a reasonable amount kicking around because they've always been saved for this reason i don't think they ever sold them here in the uk so any mm. ones that are here are imported mm. um but i mean to get a an original one um whether be that modified or or not you pr- you're probably looking at spending about i'd say anywhere in the region of 25 to 40k or so okay um for for one but it doesn't seem an awful lot considering the age of the vehicle as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, from some respects, it's actually quite uh, good value because if you think about it, the sum of all the parts uh, is quite high because a lot of the bits are quite rare, especially the engines, all that kind of stuff. Is that you know they they're very old now. You know they're ninety years old or so. So well, yeah. <laughs> they're you know actually trying to get some of the original bits for it would be very difficult. There's still plenty of companies making um, kind of replica or reproduction. Yeah, imagine things. getting sort of hot roddy type bits for it, and mix and match from the yeah. Ford parts bin. And... But but you would have to import them from um, from the states, and and yeah, they obviously come at quite a premium. But um, yeah, the next best thing for me is to build a, a replica. You can buy sort of fiberglass bodies of them, um, and I I'm looking at uh, dropping one over a, like a London taxi chassis. Which is, oh, wow. if you think about it, it's quite an old design. So the yeah. chassis looks old. So you can buy like a, a mid nineties yeah, taxi. Yeah. Weren't they an old like Morris chassis? Or something? something. Yeah, they, they. Somebody will correct us. The, the sort of origins of the chassis is is probably in the fifties or something like that, mm, and it was just yeah. made into uh, the nineties. I'm not sure. Uh, I know they facelifted the the externals in the sort of late nineties, early nineties. Yeah. Um, but I'm not sure how the chassis compares. But yeah, if you look at a chassis from like a 95 taxi, it looks like something old. Um, so the idea is it can sort of dress it up and, and make it look like uh, an older car and drop the body on and chuck a nice big dirty big V8 en- engine in there and, and try and do it for a... Well, my hope is to try and do it for a budget of about, well, ideally less than 10K or then is nice. the sort of... The vision, but yeah, that's the sort of long term plan. Oh. I did catch you looking at taxis on uh, on one of the many different uh, yeah. car buying websites uh, earlier, and I did think that's a that's a bit of a barge bingo <laughs> sort of side. <laughs> yeah. I, I, was like, I never even thought about things like that, but now that explains why yeah. you were looking at taxis. Yeah, it'd be like a donor rather than a so you, you would immediately buy it and then bring it home and like throw away all the body. <laughs> I just think, I, I think just in a taxi in itself, there's a lot of fun to be had with an yeah. old taxi. Doing the opposite is actually keeping the chassis and the body together and then. I'm sure it's a roof thousand times. It and, yeah, yeah, roof shop it, stick in something big and V8 or turbocharged. Yeah. And to be fair, I have seen um, some quite convincingly turned into pickups because the the sort of face of the taxi is is, is still quite you know even the '90s one it is still quite a dated look. It, it looks yeah, very traditional. Absolutely. And um, I actually saw one that they'd taken like the bonnet of a Morris Minor that that sort of bulge yeah. and they grafted it into the front of the taxi. And then they'd made like a slatted grill, like a Chevy truck. Oh yeah, yeah. and they turned it chrome teeth. Yeah, and and then they turned it into a pickup. So they they kind of chopped it about and, and made a cab, and then a pickup bed, which you can make out of 
you know, straight bits of steel or, or whatever. And they made a pickup mm. that looked like it was from the 50s. A factory kind of... Yeah. I guess it's it's kind of lends itself to it because you've got a cab almost at the front and then you've got yeah. the passenger section at the back. Yeah. yeah. That's really cool. If I can find some pictures of that, I'll put it on the YouTube version of the podcast. Yeah. Oh, that'd be good to do. Oh, wow. That's okay. Well, that's That it. was not what I was expecting. No. That's great. That's a, that's a great curveball. Um, Go on, Greg. You, you, you haven't decided yet. No, I know. I know what my well. I know what one of my cars definitely is. It always has been. I think I know what it's John, John, John knows straight away where this is coming from. So, in fact, I think we were just looking at the videos from Hampton Court Palace yesterday, and I think yes, I think yes. It, so for me, it has always been since I was little, knee high to a grasshopper and all that. Uh, I've always wanted a Cobra. Mm. Uh, always have. Uh, I'm probably a little bit of uh, not necessarily not a purist in them. So. I think one of the big challenges discussions I've had over the years is, you know, how would I spec it and stuff like that. You look at the original uh, Ford Edsel engines, the FE four two seven blocks. That generally most purists would say you put in a Cobra. I probably wouldn't. I probably put something like a three hundred two in it. I put a small block in it, mm. uh, particularly because the car I would want to get it wouldn't be for drag racing or racing. Therefore, it needs to be more usable. And bear in mind, the curb weight of a, a Cobra, generally it's a runner from, is about 1,200 kilos, 1,200, 1,300 kilos, thereabouts. Is a, a kit with a fiberglass body? Over yeah, it's a standard kit, somewhere around there, depending on how they've been spec to exhaust. You, know, the, you tend to find with the Cobra, is your choice of gearbox engine exhaust system is what makes you 10, 15, 100 yeah. kilos differences mm. with them. So uh, so for me, it would uh, probably something like a small 302 block, GM block, GMS 302. Because actually, I think it's a more usable engine on the road. Yes, you would have brightened it up a bit, but some of these engines are still, you know, you're into sort of three, four, five hundred horsepower, depending on. It almost doesn't matter because it's, it's the it, noise, isn't it? It's, it's the noise, but you, you know, even if you even if you start with a real basic, I think it's the two six five blocks that you used to get in them, where they're down at three hundred brake horsepower. You're still looking at the best part of 280 brake horsepower. Yeah, it's like, still going to be a <laughs> scary car. It, it is it's sufficient. Still, power to, it, to get you into lots of trouble if, if you're yeah, so inclined yeah and I've looked at it I'm still specking up in my head you know there's obviously the classic blue you see some fantastic blues now I have seen one done really well in a burnt orange uh, and it just looked amazing uh, I guess they're quite an out there shape as well as yes, as, yeah. as yes. The kind of later Cobras were with the big and engines. So you can get away with any colour. You could probably go Lamborghini, um, what is it, the smock green metallic they use on Lamborghinis would, mm. would but probably I, still work. But I do I do know I want to take on probably a, I know you're going to get you the purest, I'll probably take on a new build mm. to do. Yeah. Uh, particularly because a lot of these new builds have incorporated components that make them more usable in the UK. So DAX were the first big players in that market when they took the standard chassis and made a chassis for the UK. Uh, that actually was able to put the power on the road on the UK <laughs> road without sticking you in the nearest edge. Yeah, kind of uh, useful. Yeah. Kind of useful. Uh, and I'm also a little bit, a little bit of a controversial in that I would have centre line pipes on mine. Mm. Really, I wouldn't have side pipes. I won't put them on the other side. I put them down the centre. Yeah, for me. Linking back to, I think it was episode one. You could actually have a sticker that says "Built Not Bought." Oh, yeah, yeah. Think think so. both of you could. Yeah. Well, so, actually, we're two for two on. Kit cars right yeah. now, I suppose. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's uh, that's a, it's a bit of a curveball because I wasn't expecting it a, a, no. to come up at all. So it's, it's quite interesting. Con- controversially, if I didn't, if I could buy one that was a production car, just for an option out there, I would love an original five hundred a bath. Oh, okay. An original, okay, five hundred a bath with the sort of thirty-two horsepower engine yeah. that doesn't yeah. fit in the bonnet. Doesn't, doesn't, doesn't fit in the boot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just because the hilarious fun. Yeah, that will... and I love the funny <laughs> Greg. Yay! <laughs> Brilliant. Hold on, well, hold on. So, for the purposes of the people that don't know, Greg, how how tall are you, Greg? Uh, just over six foot three. Six foot three, there. Six foot three That's in an original Fiat five hundred. Yeah. So it's oh, like it, sort of folded up. Police yeah. Academy style. You take the front well, seats the out, nice, sit in the back. The, 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 <laughs> the nice thing with the Abarth, because of some of the modifications they do, a lot of them take uh, don't really have any concept of a rear seat anyway. So you just. Use the rails, extend the rails, and move the seats right back. So, just that you'll fit in it quite happily anyway. Okay, so we're, we're two for two on kit cars. Uh, so, Martin, what about you? I had to think about this because I've read the question in a different way. Okay. Um, sort of. So, I haven't got the pining for older vehicles in the same way that I think the rest of you have. Saying that, I've not heard of John's options, but. 
I think it also comes down to the, the simple fact that I'm just, compared to you guys, I'm not mechanically minded enough anyway. Um, so I look at it from a different a different point of view, really. Let's get let's get this clear for, straight from the beginning. If I could have anything in the world, it wouldn't be a car. It would be oh yes. It would be a bus. <laughs> uh, I would take a 1983 Leyland Olympian with Eastern Coachwork bodywork on it. I wouldn't take the Atlantean. I'd take the I'd take the Olympian uh, with. Uh, this body, has got very, very specific body, yeah. bodywork from the East Coast chucked on it. ECW bodywork, um, and I would convert it to a motorhome. That, it's as simple as that. I mean, I'm it's, down with that. That's pretty it, cool. Yeah, yeah it'll be, cool. be double deck. It would be. It would have its own uh, sort of, you know, obviously gas cylinders. It would. It would have its own kitchen, working bathrooms, all that sort of stuff. But that's not a car. So <laughs> no, it is a motor vehicle, I guess. Yeah. It is a motor vehicle, but I would have much more fun doing that um, than I would have owning an old car. I feel if I own if I owned an old car uh, or a project car like that, it just, I just wouldn't be able to give it the the time or care it needs. Yeah. Um, whereas if I was living on the thing, I have to maintain. <laughs> this is true. I mean, how great, because you say, oh, let's, let's go and watch the racing at Spa or let's go to Le Mans and you could, you know, you jump in, you drive down, you get there. Oh, look, I've already got a shower, a sink, a toilet. Um, you know, you could put your satellite dish on the top. You could even, you could even have a satellite at the back, sit on the roof with appropriate safety measures and watch the race from the top of the roof, which I've seen people do with double deckers. That's very cool. Uh, absolutely. And, and obviously you can go in there and say, look, I've got, I've got a, a, a great, you know, daily vehicle. It's 12, cylinder, uh, sorry, 12 litres, rear engine, four to the floor. Um, <laughs> yeah. What, what can I say? It's, yeah. Uh, good uh, three to the gallon. Well, if we're lucky, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so what the bus, was that the bus you grew up with as a child? Just uh, it was my first school bus. Because I, the reason I mentioned the Atlantean is because after what was in Huddersfield, it was the West Yorkshire Metro buses with the little kink in the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, they, and they were proper screamers, full yeah. speed with the crawler gear as well. Yeah. I was Just wondering why you time. knew specifically the body well, styles. And... Well, it is also my favourite um, body style of them. Um, the, my second school bus was a Northern Counties Leyland Olympia, with the, which was completely different and was local to Nottingham. Um, this one was Yorkshire uh, initially. It was um, uh, Keefley, maybe? I don't know. What's, 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 somewhere up that way. Uh, A95KWW. It's been scrapped anyway, so it's, uh, it's not a problem. Um, um, should, if you hadn't already guessed, uh, Martin has like an encyclopedic knowledge. Yeah. Do, you think, do, you think, do you think that's bad? We used to have some of the very first Atlanteans in Huddersfield, at our, and we used to serve our school, and they were old, old Elreg. Yeah. And they were, they were straight out, four speed, low deck, and they yeah. were proper. Not to mention some old W Reg um, that I went on with school buses. Um, but then, but yeah, well, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was the sort of, I suppose, next gen generation. But no, for me, it'd be an, an Olympian. But I, if I, if I can't take the bodywork I want, I'll take another one. Um, there was a fantastic one that arrived at. Um, we there was a local music festival I went to last year called Wicked Haven Fest. Oh, I've heard about that. Yeah, it's really honestly, good. it was it was it's a really good laugh. Who um, was the headline they had last year? Uh, oh, uh, the the feeling. That they were was really it. good. They're really good. Yeah, really, really good. Um, and there was a comedian called Joel Domit who came over as well, John, and he was Joel he was, Domit, he was Domit, such I've a good him. He does um well he does all the ITV two shows basically. Oh, He's, that yeah, fella, yeah, yeah. yes. But it's a, it's a great festival and really worth checking out. I don't think it's not for obvious reasons not on this year, but I'd recommend checking it out at Haddonfest.co.uk. Yeah, yeah. But um there was a, a vendor, a vegan food vendor that turned <coughs> up. Shameless and, plug. Uh, yeah. yeah, vegan food vendor turned up in one. Oh and yes, wanted it. That um, was cool. But if I had to bring it back to cars, there are there are two cars that if we must, yeah, there are two modern day cars that do appeal, and I can't tell you why. But the first one is um, obviously, uh, you know, most people are quite uh, happy to accept that the new Alphas are very pretty cars. Mm. Uh, I like the Alpha Julia Quadra. Quadrifoglio, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure nobody's yeah. going to disagree with you. Quattro fromage, quattro fromage, four cheese pizza. I, I like my cars like I like my pizza. <laughs> and then the other one, which I have no explanation why, apart from probably the noise, 
is I really like the Bathurst uh, edition of the Monaro. Uh, yeah, it's six point two litre V eight. Yeah, it's quite an obscure choice actually mm. because the the Monaro was a wonderful turn for Vauxhall that then well, fizzled well, out. Well, it wasn't there. It wasn't turn, Vauxhall. Was it? That's why. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but the fact they brought it here with it. Well, yeah. I mean, we all know it's a Holden, obviously. It's but remarkable nonetheless. Yeah. You yeah. could drive a Vauxhall badged car which had a five point seven litre and in some guys supercharged V eight. Yeah. Mm. That's pretty dang cool. Yeah. It's uh, the, the scream that came. And I remember as a kid, for initially watching it on Top Gear. And that's where I first heard it. And I was like, oh, that, is, that is insane. Um, yeah. But they, they hold decent money. There's, uh, you know, I've got mm. friends that work in the, uh, in, in, for, for Vauxhall. And, you know, when the VXRs come in, they, they hold some silly money. You're still probably looking at sort of nearly 30 grand for wow. of good condition Base, you know, red, obviously. Um, Monaro, you know, entering Monaro. They're they like Ferraris, resale red then. Mostly <laughs> red, you get some Arden blues um, and then some blacks and whites. Would you just be cheaper to go to Australia? Probably would be cheaper to import it back something in. from. Is, yeah. In Loughborough, there is a Holden Maloo. Is it the Maloo, which is the, the, the pick flatbed the pickup? Ute, yeah. Ute, that's the one. That's a really bizarre yeah, thing. Very cool. Yeah, they're, they're cool, actually. Yeah. So it's, it's a bit of a curveball there. but um, So I will either go for uh, one of the fastest vehicles, or, or the nicest sounding vehicles, uh, or the loudest, which is a bus. So um, they're both loud. <laughs> like That's a good eclectic. Yeah. Go. But, so go on then, John. Uh, mine, mine are obvious, I, I think. Is it a Volvo? So, so I've broken, <laughs> I've broken <laughs> mine down. This is, I've broken mine into three categories. There is the car that I have the kind of most emotional attachment to, so it's my favourite car model from that perspective. The one that I kind of most want to own, my kind of hero car. And then in terms of kind of favourite, what do I want to buy next? What is going to be my next car purchase? Um, so, yes. yes. As, as, as Greg has just actioned there. Just, just you can tell us all three, but you will have to pick one. Okay. I will, I will bus, so, but I'll, I'll go through this. So the one I have the most emotional attachment to, we've kind of touched on before, was a Volvo 850, because my dad took us to see them racing in 94 at Donington Park. And... He then consequently went and bought an 850T5. And to me, that was just the coolest thing. My dad was driving a race car for all intents and purposes. Um, so that has a very long attachment. I then uh, I then ended up acquiring a, a couple of 850s and I've ended up with my Pride and Joy, which is a yellow 850T5R. Um, those in the know will know why it's important that it's yellow. Um, so yeah, I have a strong emotional attachment to that car and I've had loads of 850s. I still have two or three of them kicking around. In terms of car that I most, like my hero car, stems back to my second car, the BMW E28 and the consequently the M535i's that followed. I only ever had an M535i, and although it wore an M badge, as with a lot of modern BMWs, it has an M, but not a number that suffixes it. And so I came under an awful lot of stick when I would on the odd occasion maybe slip and say, I have to drive an M5, and then my friends would all go, 3.5i <laughs> because it wasn't it wasn't a real M5 it had yeah, you know yeah. limited slip diff it had the body kit it had all the, the trimmings but it, at the end of the day it was still only the M30 single overhead cam yeah. 3.5 litre so the car in most auto my hero car is probably an E28 M5 with a proper 286 horsepower twin cam and I actually I've written down in my notes the spec and I realise this is exactly the same car that Chris Harris has <laughs> really like that. and actually I, I photographed that car years ago at Le Mans we were walking through the Porsche support race the cup race um, pits and it was part of it it obviously driven down in it and I, I was completely ignoring all of these nice Porsche race cars going around I was like dude E28 M5 in black with black leathers this is like the perfect car shadow line it's not got the M body kit on it is literally the definition of the perfect car. Um, and it turned out, watching one of the YouTube videos that he did a few years later, that was his car, and you see him drifting it around the track. Um, so, yes, Mr. Harris, if you ever come to watch or listen to this podcast, I, I hate you just a little bit because I love <laughs> your E28. Uh, in terms of then my final one, uh, the car that I want to buy next, I have a massive hankering for the Porsche 996.1. So for those that aren't Porsche nerds, that's basically the 911 from sort of the very late 90s when they changed to water-cooled. Um, and they ran the 911 and the Boxster were basically the same vehicle from bulkhead forward. And there was a lot of controversy about this. So they eventually changed the 996 to have slightly different headlights and look different up front. So there was distinction between your sort of 30, 40,000 pound Porsche and your 60, 70, 80,000 pound Porsche. 
but it's that one where it still has the same fried egg headlights that I really, really like. So it leaves you with a 3.4 Carrera 2, Carrera 4 uh, in that kind of 98, 99. It has to be a coupe manual, very specifically. But in terms of choosing my one, it's got to be the T5R. That's just because they're, they're I, since I was like 13, uh, that's been the car. Even, no, younger, 94, I've been 10, I think. Um, yeah, that's it's the car. I wanted the T5R for so long. And when I eventually got the yellow one, uh, I, I was reminded why they're blinking awesome cars. So I think it's a weapon. So you own your favourite car? Yes. In fact, I remember going to uh, a, a management away day. There's these stupid things you do when you work for a corporate company. And they said, tell us something interesting about you. And I'd had this car about a week. So uh, they came to me and said, tell me an interesting fact. I said, I just bought my dream car. And I was like, <laughs> it's like it's in the car park today and you can see people sort of looking out the window thinking oh you bought a Ferrari and where did you get the money from what's that about <laughs> and then it got around to the end and the uh, the, the senior engineer in said so come on John you've got to tell us what's your dream car I said I bought a yellow Volvo Estate and everyone sort of looked at me and was like <laughs> <laughs> who invited this crater <laughs> <laughs> you know they're all driving you know brand new Audis and this and that and the other all leased through the company and here's me driving a 25 year old Volvo happy as Larry yeah, yeah. but there was there was a fun incident, and about two weeks later, they featured, like, Top Gear did their top 100 cars. I've got the magazine somewhere. And the chief engineer, obviously, was a, it's a bit of a petrol head, you know, his alphas and things. And he'd been reading through this, and he'd flipped through the magazine, and there in the magazine was a yellow T5R listed in the Top Gear's top 100 cars. Yeah. And he came to my desk, and he's, he put it on the desk, and he's like, I get it. <laughs> it's finally clicked. I get I it. Like, that's really. very cool. I was like, thank you very much. So what that also means is that between the four of us, We've all picked vehicles that have more than four cylinders. Mm -hmm. So there are, what we can scientifically say there is that no one's, in the history of the world, no one's favourite car has ever had four cylinders. That is a fact. <laughs> Discuss. Because <We've> yeah. <laughs> yeah. interestingly, if you go to the smaller cars, and probably my number third on my list would be something like a Morgan Free Wheeler, just for the fun of it. Because yeah, it's, okay. like, it's almost hybrid in car to a bike in some ways, because it's a motorbike yeah, engine. Yeah, yeah. You're getting out to two cylinders. Yeah. You can just get jump over four. I mean, it's not oh. quite two, but it's not quite four. I mean, if it, is, if it had gone down sort of the Reliant Robin route, we'd have been furious. But you know, <laughs> Free Wheeler, I think because it's the two wheels at the front. Come maybe on, two, wheels, yeah. two wheels at the front. You yeah. can yeah. with a little shot. It's still, it's still you know what? Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll allow it. Teeth, bullet holes, racing green. Yeah. Oh yes. So, <laughs> but that's really interesting then because it's it, it, you know we've effectively got a Volvo Estate, two historical cars, and a bus, which means when it comes to favourite cars, it's quite eclectic mm. or wrong. Um, in my case, <laughs> I was expecting you know what. I'll say three, three, three cars and a passenger carrying vehicle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Like the Italian job, we could put all three in the back of the bus, right? Hey, look, defi define oh. car. If it's passenger carrying vehicle, then we're all in, you know. <laughs> I suppose all of them are relatively attainable as well. Yeah. There's, there's nothing too exotic or, or millions and millions of pounds worth of. No, I, I think your two, yours, your two involved more work, probably. Yeah, uh, in the John really got probably. his. Yeah, yeah. My, okay, <laughs> I think a bus, a bus, the sort of thing I'm talking about, probably obtainable for under five figures. So it's not ridiculous. Yeah. Um, although then I'd have to actually work out how to do DIY. So that's, <laughs> there's, there's, there's that, and selling it to your uh, soon-to-be wife. Uh, she, yes, she's told me that I can have one as long as I provide. The land, the house, the children, and the pets first. Um, <laughs> well, that in, yeah, pretty much in that order. <laughs> she says I can have an acre for buses if I provide her two acres of land for her. I think. What does she want to two acres of land? I don't know, and I think I need to explain how big an acre is because uh, I. Yeah, how many buses? That's a lot of buses. buses. What well, exactly an acre of buses? I mean, I feel that like, like a good deal. To I me. feel like yeah. Clayton travel could become a thing. I'm going to go and <laughs> take people on holiday. Yeah. But, uh, well, that, that was really interesting. I think it'd be great to see as well in the comments what other people sort of. Uh, well, first of all, how people are going to interpret the question. And then also what the, the, the people's suggestions are going to be. Because I think it will be really eclectic. Mm -hmm. um, interesting that no one sort of mentioned. I sort of wondered whether um, we'd get down the route of things like original Land Rovers and original Range Rovers and things like that. But we haven't seemed to... I guess yeah. there's something... I mean, you could be like, so I want to own Land Rover number one, the uh, Chassis 86 yeah. which has just been bought by Ineos, but... It's the, only, it's, the only, it's the unrealism because I thought about this when I went yeah. to some of the, the, the you know your really original alphas, yeah. uh, your original Gila's. Uh, you know, I, I maybe you could put. I could probably look at uh, 
an Alpha Junior from the time back in the time the six is probably obtainable. But again, by the time I get to the point where I could afford that, you know, you're pushing into some serious money, and it's like so. so we all read the question is obtainable is what this. Yeah, yeah, there's almost a realistic yeah. slant to it. You know, I, I yeah. could, you could put Benny Blur on the list, couldn't you? But I, I, I mean, that's a multi-million pound car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. Of course, it looked like uh, I'm trying to know what ACDC's lead singer's called now. Brian, um, Johnson. Brian Johnson. You know, yeah. Brian Johnson in his uh, Bentley, uh, Bentley <laughs> oh, Blower yes. just going yeah, to the yeah. supermarket. Of course, I would, but yeah. he's, he's a full time, multi millionaire. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's ep- a... epic, epic lead singer of a epic band in my eyes. Well, hopefully, we can sit here in the future and have more than 25% of us owning our favourite thing. That'll be, that'll be great. But, uh, yeah, uh, so do please like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, right, well. I think in that case, then, we should probably uh, head through down to our barge bingo uh, section. Uh, Now, it happens every week. We set uh, some criteria. Um, John set this one, and I think it's absolutely brilliant. Uh, John, what have you set for today's barge bingo? So, today's barge bingo is a convertible for under £4,000. So, the uh, price limit is three nine nine five. So cutting off all those cars just to full ground. <laughs> what is what's the favourite convertible or the best convertible you think you can get for three nine nine five? Go best or more interesting. Most interesting. Uh, well, it's it's what convertible could you get? Would you get? Would you buy? Is it just interesting? Make it up as you go along. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to Martin because he's looking studiously at his iPad, which means I'm not sure if he's prepared or he's just very confidently enjoying what he's got on screen. Uh, a mix of the two, because I don't think this is going to be that popular. However, first of all, I will say that one of my favourite um, genuine convertibles in terms of, not necessarily with big engines or anything like that, but as a kid, I always remember thinking that I, I, I quite liked the shape of the modern day MR2. I always thought they were really cool little convertibles. but we, uh, So the Mark three then the yeah the, the, the last the sort of the last ones essentially yeah. sort of 2000 i mean the one i looked at here for example is 2005 um oh, which yeah. was you know really right at the end of it i think they stopped doing them in 07 so yeah because the mark one and mark two you well not in the uk you can you can get a convertible but you get a t-top which is kind of like a half and half yeah. as a target type yeah so um however unfortunately for me the one that i thought looked really great with a little t- a toyota approved body kit is 3996 and i'm not joking so <laughs> i have been to have a look and i don't think this will be popular for a number of reasons however i have found um it's four wheel drive okay it's v6 Convertible V. What on earth have you found? I found an Audi TT oh, three point two uh, Quattro Roadster for three thousand five hundred and ninety five pounds. Well, does that count as V six? Is that a VR six? Is it I mean, like the R thirty two three point two single. Oh, right, but I mean, it says I've put I've put V six because it says V six in the advert. But you know, we we can we can debate. It takes the boxes. It's a sub four grand convertible. It has six pistons. It does, and it's got uh, MOT till April two thousand and twenty one. It's done eighty three thousand miles. It's really it's got the private plate, which is included as well, um, which they reckon is probably worth about three hundred and forty quid. New battery with a warranty on it. To be honest, I just thought for a bit of fun, probably a tiny little reliable convertible. Um, I have some honourable mentions, but because I've gone first, I don't want to say them in case they don't come up. So I'll okay. wait till the end for that. But ultimately, my my decision was to go for yeah a uh, a six cylinder. It does say V six on the bonnet. I've just written on the engine. Yeah, it is a VR six engine there. But it's uh, yeah three point two. I just really like that. It's um I, the Mark One TT with the roof on. I think has a bit of a reputation for being you know a bit of a uh, well i don't want to say hairdresser's car but it didn't it got a bit of flack didn't i it? think it's i think it's a marmite car i i was a bit on the fence at first but i've grown to really like yeah, the shit. yeah. i like the still, hard top more though so. mm. still don't float my boat no no just don't i just so this it sits to me um in the same category as the audi a2 not to be confused with the uh the S2 and the RS2, but the A2 little people carry it. Yeah, yeah. Where I think Audi were doing some amazing things with design. This is like a little concept car that went onto the road. I yeah. think it's aged very well, bearing in mind you yeah. could get these in, what, 1999? I yeah, I think so. Yeah, that must have been quite a late model. Was this is the last last year of them, essentially. So they the, changed over. Yeah. Was it, was it, yeah, was that the last of the ones that killed you if you 
stepped too much power into the back end or they did that face. Because I know the very early ones were notorious for spitting you out. Of you know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to get into them. arguments of who's killing who, but, you know, <laughs> there's a potential for it. But, I mean, you know, just for, for what it, it is, it four-wheel drive, yeah. yeah four-wheel drive, you know, if it snows, then I'll just t- take the foot off the throttle a little bit more. It's a manual, by the way, and comes with uh, tornado covers and things like that. So I was just really chuffed that someone's trying to... It's a private sale, I think, you know, I really hope they get the money for it because I think it's a nice clean car. I actually really like that. Yeah, so that's that's my uh, that's my vote. So the, the the one time I've gone first, I feel quite smug, I'm afraid. But it's, uh, yeah. Boss, can we buy a new car? Well, that was a no. <laughs> no, it's definitely a no. <laughs> who wants I to, like that. Who wants to go next? Yeah, I don't mind. Go on, Chris. Go so I have found, uh, well under budget, for uh, the princely sum of 2995 a 2002 Mercedes SLK compressor convertible um it's in a, a lovely lovely red um and it has uh the most brilliant interior it's it's a nice red and black combo and i, I must admit these are kind of on my radar now um after uh my ex-housemate bought one uh, quite recently and i went to birmingham to go test drive it on his behalf um and that was a v6 manual so this, this one is an auto um, and it's only got 68,000 miles on it, and it looks mint. It looks really, really clean. Um, so for reference, the R170 chassis is the first gen, sort of 97 onwards, with the metal folding roof. May, yes. I, may I ask a question? You may. Uh, what's the situation with rust on those in, in general? They, they can rust. Is it, but is they, it with all things, maintenance is key? I yeah, think so. I there think are are that bad. Okay. Uh, I think the the wheel arches like to get a bit frilly. Yeah. Um, and and this one. And it tends to be the boot beautiful. lip as well. Right. They, they tend to get it's like the CLKs yeah. are terrible for it. Um, Maybe it that's what I'm thinking of. Something like that. Like a small yeah. car could well have been garaged most of its life. Yeah. It looks really it looks clear. I'm looking forward to you putting these pictures up because yeah. the interior is lovely. The, the interior <laughs> looks like it's never been sat. Yeah. I that's I incredible. think the interior is possibly a bit marmite, but it is. Uh, I do like it. Well, in terms of cleanliness for a what, 18 yes. year old interior. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. yeah. Interestingly, I believe the R170 SLK was the pioneer of the metal folding roof. That you then saw later on the 206cc and various other things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Right, actually, it's uh, oh, nice. That's a nice, a nice clean suggestion. Yeah, I'm not going to argue with that. For that, uh, John or Greg? Who wants it? John? Uh, Greg's pointing at me because I think he's still quick <laughs> hunting around. Is he worried? So I have, I have an obvious choice. Is it an MX5? Uh, yeah, the, uh, one of my honourable mentions is an MX5. Okay. Um, an obvious a choice is a Porsche 986. Because you can get a 2.5 or 2.7 still for under four grand. Uh, with my own experience, the less you pay for a Boxster, the more you'll spend on repairs. Mm. Um, they can be a little bit uh, finickety, can we, but a lovely car. Can we post under honourable, honourable mentions then? Because one of my honourable mentions is a 3995 that looks familiar, 986. Actually. Which looks disturbingly looks like disturbingly mine. disturbingly like yours, but this is a 1998 R-Red. Actually, so I take that early back. Ones. It looks a little bit like mine, except it looks quite a lot better. Full service history. Mm. It's um, I uh, g- genuinely that's that was an honourable honourable mention. But that's, it's, um, that's nice. So we should put that online though. Yeah, I found a two point seven at three two nine five, complete with uh, with a dodgy roof that the guy <laughs> says you need to pull up manually, but it's never Amazing. bothered him. Um, because you know, if it bothered you, you're not going to tell the sellers, are you? <laughs> uh, and it also came with a myriad of shit additional badges. So it got underneath the little spoiler that comes up from the boot. You got. A, Porsche sticker which I, I hate and for some reason on the centre console next to the gear shift he'd put a Porsche a lettering Porsche badges uh, just, just like, to remind you just, yeah. yeah in case you know the badge on the steering wheel wasn't enough or the fact you're looking out over those nice little haunches oh, it's but, a Porsche on it I don't know what it is with people and sticking extra Porsche badges and it even had on the boot lid as well it had the the sort of more modern you know they space the lettering yeah. out for Porsche it had done that as well <laughs> I, just I can see that clashing quite badly with the yeah. uh, 90s Exactly, and it, it yeah. should just have that nice Boxster script or nothing yeah. on the back, I Absolutely. think. But, um, but the one I've gone for, although I probably would go for the, the Porsche, I found something that I thought was really cool. So I found a Saab 9.3 Vector 1.8 convertible, uh, one at 9.95, so way in the budget. But the reason I chose this particular car is it's finished in purple. 
And it just, <laughs> I just <laughs> couldn't. St- I kept going back looking at it and thinking, that's so cool. You don't see many purple cars apart from Citroen uh, C3 Picasso. Yeah, so Tell me that's not a beautiful oh, oh, picture. That's a lovely color. Now, has that been wrapped or has that been I don't painted? know. It's, it's kind of a bit. Re- reminds yeah. me a little bit of. It's Cadbury's kind of like, purple. Isn't yeah, it, it is Cadbury's purple. purple. It is Cadbury's I love purple. One of my favourite car colours is a BMW colour. Other chocolate um, brands are available. Yes, indeed. Uh, that came out, I think, it's like late seventies, early eighties, and it came on the E thirty four because our rat rod was originally this colour. It was called Techno Violet, which is so Germanic. Can I be yeah. really pedantic about that version as well? Yep. It's a, because that's the pre facelift of that generation of nine three. On that, that so that this is sort of what we're talking sort of O two to O six O seven. Yeah, this is an O six. Okay, so so is it a purple? It's a purple vector then. It's <laughs> it is, but it was still Saab ish. So uh, uh, no, the, it's it's called a nine three vector. Yeah, in, the, in this version, Saab was still allowed to do things like they had a really bizarre little information display that came out the top of the, da- the top of the dashboard just before the windscreen, and all it showed was the time, the radio, and the Mars gallon in the facelift. Vauxhall General Motors made them get rid of that and put it in the central display like all other car manufacturers. <laughs> yeah. But Saab still had little quirks like that in that model. And, it, so it's the la- and, of course, the Saab cup holder. If you've never experienced the most over-engineered cup holder in the world is in that version of a Saab yeah. from that generation. I mean, that, that in itself so will still, tell me. There were still Saabish quirks alongside the stupid key. Yeah, but, the, the, the Saabish quirks had, after that, been... Beaten out mercilessly the really by, by GM. The really have. No, you will not be individual. <laughs> <laughs> Little things like you Fall couldn't take line. the yeah. key out of the ignition till it was in reverse or first. It had to be in gear before you could take the key out, which I thought was quite cool. Savage. Um, so yeah, that's my chosen one. Even wow. though there was honourable mention to the nine eight six and a lovely yellow MX five, I you, found for three nine nine five exactly. I get a feeling you're going to get votes based on colour alone there. It's, um, it's, it's Saab and purple. I mean, it's good win. So we've got we've got an Audi TT. We've got a Saab. We've got the Mercedes. Greg? Well, I, I'm i toying. I've got three. I've got, well, I, had <laughs> I love how we've all kind of got to this. You're like, I'm not sure that's good enough. I'm going to find another one. I've got two. Well, I've got two. I've got two. Okay. Uh, the first one out of the bag that I thought, you know what, I'll stick with this one was a Crossfire. 3.2 litre 2006 Crossfire. So um, an SLK yeah. then. An SLK. <laughs> you, you get a lot more for your money. But I actually settled on something a little bit rarer. Oh, sorry. Rare the crossfire? Oh, yeah. 3,000... Uh, three and a half grand that comes with a private yes. number plate. Slightly under budget okay. with a private plate. So nice. what's rarer than a crossfire in the UK? Yeah, because... Well, it's, they're not that... There's one in our village. A 1995... Mm-hmm. Okay. Suzuki... Cappuccino? Yes. Cappuccino. <laughs> oh, amazing. <laughs> Lovely. Amazing. 3,800 3, pound. Uh, one lady owner. Red... It's immaculate. It's had all the underneath done. It's got stainless steel exhaust on it, uh, fully sealed alloy wheels. It's just had a full MOT as well. It's three thousand eight three thousand eight hundred. You know, I know the brief was one convertible, not point seven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, I mean point six. For you go uh, for two thirds. Yeah. Don't you need two of them, one for each foot? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so that combined yeah. with the five hundred R bar from earlier, there's a real <laughs> theme going on here. But there is. I wasn't say the tallest person in the room, but that's probably Chris actually. Mm. Um, but so almost the tallest been. person in the room with the smallest <laughs> car. Oh wow! So it's red. It's red. Copper oh, red. That would be yeah, great. A friend really of mine like had one of those. That's a really cool little They're car. They're really cool. They, they count as a K car as well. Yeah, they are a K car, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Like the Daihatsu Copen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Are they 660cc or something like 660, that? 660, 660cc and alongside the Copen, they, they, they sold uh, four Copens for every one of them, roughly, I think, is the stat. So they are. Oh, they, really? Are they the same car underneath? Uh, pretty much, I think. I did not, I did not really know cool. that. There's a company in our village. But they are very, very rare. There's very few of them about. So yeah, if you yeah, want exclusivity yeah. out of the selection, then that, that is my offer. I'm down with that. Who would have thought uh, you'd align Suzuki with exclusivity? <laughs> well, yeah. well uh, when we, I think for the next episode, I have something that ties into that very well. Can I, um, just one more honourable mention, because I think, uh, for, for, from my side, because there were loads of... Um, so we, I, I quite like the fact we've all avoided three series convertibles and we've all avoided um, uh, well, uh, MX-5s really MX-5s and CLKs because there yeah. were quite a lot of them yeah. around um, just yawn in term, yeah but in terms of value for money um, in terms of the most modern car I could find for 3995 as a convertible um, lots of these appearing at the moment and they are quite 
boring. Oh, yeah, it was that's Eon. That's a Volkswagen Eos. Eos. And Nicely is, styled, though. This I is think. a two litre turbo, a 2009 model with uh, 89,000 miles, sorry, and a full red leather interior. Um, and I just thought, you know what, as an honourable mention, and sure. it's a metal, metal roof. Metal roof, so you can use it through winter. Yeah. I've always thought that they're actually just. They're, they're not a noteworthy car, but they're just nicely proportioned. They're, yeah, yeah, there's nothing offensive about yeah. the styling. They're, they're just very, well, I guess very vanilla, but they're it, very nice. It's yeah. a coupe golf, isn't it? Well, it is. I mean, it's reliable underpinnings. It's going to be warm in the winter. It's going to be nice with the roof down. The roof will probably carry on working. And it, it, although I was trying to get to the interior pictures, this cell has put 55 photos up of the car. <laughs> Jeez. Um, 12 MOT, full red leather interior, uh, very well maintained car, according to the advert. So our, our, our advice from choosing four convertibles for ourselves is none of the ones we've chosen, yeah. but we've all decided we quite like this this EOS. Any other honourable mentions from the table? The only thing I threw into the pot I looked at, it was going to be controversial as to whether it was a convertible or top, was a soft top Jimmy. Uh, yeah. Soft top on it. Yeah, yeah I'll give you that. Yeah. Because yeah. it's got, classed as convertible. So. It's classed as convertible. Uh, yeah, and I don't, I don't mind the, one, the one that I was trying to find and throw to the pot, but you can't find it for the money yet, is the S2000. Oh, yeah. yes. You see, if that if they'd come up, the I'd have picked S2000. one of those. The Honda yeah. S2000. Yeah. But unfortunately, it hasn't quite reached that price point. It's yet. really interesting, isn't it? It might never. The it SLK has gone to that price point. So yeah. um, my background with the R170 is my mum bought one of those brand new in 02. Uh, YF02TUU, as it happens, is a... 200 compressor manual yep. lovely car in a lazuli light blue um, and she test drove that and the S2000 and I desperately wanted her to buy the S2000 um, in fact I was too young to drive at the time but the dealer took me out in the passenger seat for a, a spin in it and it was just the most wild sounding thing uh, I'd never been in a car with VTEC, let alone a, an S2000. VTEC, yeah. But she chose the Mercedes because she thought it would have a better residual value. And the irony is, the S2000 has <laughs> become so iconic, it's held its value significantly better than the Mercedes the did. The cheapest yeah. Honda S2000 on Auto Trader is a, uh, a 2000 W Reg with 152,000 wow. miles on it. It's 5295. Good. Yeah. Uh, so they wouldn't have come in budget. I think the most expensive one is <laughs> a mistake. Um, the most expensive one that is genuine is twenty thousand nine hundred and fifty pounds, and that is an eighteen thousand mile O nine wow. Edge, which is one of the last ones. It was, um, you know, they, they did a slight rehash of it, but yeah, Honda sold did. it through the main dealers all the way through to O nine. Yeah. It was, um, it was a, a pop, popular car. So the top tip is. Don't buy a Mercedes, buy a Honda. Yeah, yeah so, so the top tip is we were all wrong and you need to spend more money. Which, if you watch Formula One, seems very arse about face. <laughs> oh, exactly. But I think uh, that was uh, it, it's, it's fascinating, some of the cars we've got there. And we'll put them all online. Yep. Uh, it'll be interesting to see your comments. Uh, time is ticking on, so I must say at Again. this point, yes. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you uh, to Greg and thank you to Chris for joining us again for another automotive anecdote. Uh, you can like, subscribe, find us on all normal podcast uh, channels. And John, you're still updating the YouTube on a regular basis. Yes, I am. So you can also find Automotive Tales videos uh, and Automotive Tales social media on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, etc. All social media platforms. And with that, we will see you very soon. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye. Ta-da! Ta-da!